What is going on everybody, welcome back to the Civilization 5 realistic AI only battle. There's a little bit of a group movement coming on, I see hashtag remove Mongolia came up, and then hashtag keep Mongolia came up, so both, you know, both fair movements at the moment, they're both one person against another, if, if we get more, it's significant, we'll see, but um, who knows, for now, Mongolia will be remaining very much as they were, and the game seems to be working a bit better, although I don't know why I said that, I've literally just clicked next turn for the first time, it could all fall apart in seconds, but it doesn't seem to be freezing anymore, so we've got something alright, we might just need to move around a bit slower, but there we go, Casablanca, which was a very poorly settled Moroccan city, does fall into the Songhai's hands, so they're going to be looking pretty normal, I should say, with their borders, and Mongolia, I think we spotted this before, they actually did forward settle the Shoshone, let's hope they don't get into North America too, if the nightmare wasn't bad enough. Some good news, the Huns seem to be settling a couple more cities. If they're not going to take Russia out, let's at least hope they settle a bit more and just naturally overtake them and suffocate them by surrounding them eventually. Poland's already playing their part in that too. Stockholm's under pretty bad siege. It looks like it's Poland and Russia doing most of the work, but there's some other people just around. Never know. Byzantium, piecing out the Songhai, clinging on. How Brazil doing? They are one of the sieves that have let us down. Like they could have, they they're a sieve that could have done like they could have done what Mongolia is doing just fine, and they chose not to. Like all of Mongolia fits within South America. By I, I might be completely wrong. It does look like it should. Oh, finally Indonesia. Phew, my heart was breaking for you guys. Well, Rome has turned this right around. Did I don't know if Spain took Madrid back or what happened? But there we go. Rome now has Paris and Madrid. I think Spain must have taken it back very briefly. I think Morocco's going after Spain, so I think I think Rome is safe from them. I don't know, though. Maybe not. That's pretty big. Nice job, guys. How's North America looking? So the Korea going after the Aztecs. It seemed like everyone was teaming up on the Aztecs, but it looks like now it's sort of calmed down a little bit, but this city might fall as well. The Korea doing very good, though. And yeah, there we go. <laughs> Just like that, it does fall. So yeah, the Korea now looking like the strongest up here. Pretty cool. And Morocco completing Machu Picchu. Nice little addition. Hopefully, I'd love to see Rome get really strong. They never normally do that well. I mean, three cities isn't much, but they are three capitals, so maybe Paris and Madrid will bounce back relatively quickly. You'd hope so, because Rome has not done too well, all things considered. Not not done great. But we'll see. We'll see. Surely they can. Also, the Korean random city in the middle of this area... I don't know what it's called. It's not really Siberia, is it? That's like up here. Uh, in the middle of Asia. is starting to just like kind of grow big. It looks like Mongolia might be about to take it over. Obviously, whether they take attack Seoul at the same time could be interesting. My one worry is if I killed Mongolia, I'm pretty sure Korea and Siam still wouldn't take advantage. Like there was so, There's so much land here. Like Siam could have at least five more cities in this space, and they don't. So I don't think we can just blame Mongolia. No, we can't just blame me. Sorry, can't get this right. Rome and Mongolia v Austria. Well, there you go, Rome. You've If Austria takes all of this, then they're going to be looking very very good in Europe. So that'll be kind of cool. But yeah, I, I don't know what Rome's thinking. I guess they obviously think Mongolia is going to help them out a lot. When in reality, that's probably not the case, I'm afraid. Oh, another new Hunnic city. Yeah, they're just surrounding Russia. This could get very interesting. Very weird. Especially if they don't give open borders and they can't get back. But maybe they will. They're trading. Maybe they're just going to work together instead. I mean, that could work too. Looks like the Huns are planning to maybe invade the Ottomans down here. Would be smart. Persia, everyone's looking to you right now. We need someone to stand up and be really strong. You could definitely do it. You've got another settler in there. Looks like... I mean, you could just ignore India and Siam, who both look, you know, relatively... They actually both look like they have bigger armies than Persia, despite Persia... Persia probably have more, it's just more spread out. Um, obviously, Persia could maybe take out Arabia when things are good. That would go well. Arabia having an okay game, but they, they were doing really well at the start, but they lost a lot of the stuff, didn't they? Maybe Indonesia. Maybe now they can find stuff, send their workers out, or warriors. Maybe they'll be able to colonize Australia, beat Mongolia to it. That'd be pretty cool. But it seems like Mongolia's already flirting with the idea, sending a warrior down. Got another settler coming down this way. To ruin any of Siam's chances, at least these mountains will protect you until planes are sort of a thing. 
Mongolia aren't really coastal, so you're sort of safe from frigates and stuff. Japan will be very happy with that news, of course. Not sure how long that will last for them. Nice bit of peace and tranquility off on their own part of the map. Great Britain's still doing fine. It's kind of hard to judge them when they're not on the mainland. How well they're doing, but they're still here. Looking pretty strong. We'll see if they get involved with anything. How are the Zulu doing? That's the big... They took one city off the Congo. That's the start. But the Congo gained this off Egypt. So, a bit of a trade. Obviously the Congo losing out, really, because the Zulu just gained one free city. But there we go. Iroquois v the Sioux. Oh, this will probably be it for the Sioux. They have definitely fallen apart. I didn't realise they were doing this badly. Down to one city. Yeah, that will probably fall to the Iroquois, who are becoming this sort of strong, strong nation on the east coast. It's going to be kind of cool if the Iroquois... Cree, maybe the Shoshone could step it up a little bit, then we could have a sort of a cool freeway fight, which obviously the Cree would probably lose in that case because it's both sides, but I think the Cree are the best at the moment, but you never know, this could happen, the Comanche are probably in trouble too, if the Iroquois could take out both these that'd be pretty useful although getting to the Comanche is pretty hard the Aztecs, very much struggling, I think they're done in this one, they just pieced out with the Comanche but the Mayans We'll probably take them out eventually. Oh, the Sioux do actually have a settler. So they won't be quite eliminated just yet. I don't know if, if they lose the city first, the settler might die. I don't really know how it works. Exactly. Complete kills isn't on anymore, so I assume they might just die if they lose their last city. If it was on, the unit would survive. So I think the new changes that you guys have informed me of may have screwed over the Sioux. If, of course, they die or don't settle first, which they probably will. Ethiopia's still here, another one of those sieves just leaving us wanting a little bit more, but you know, they've just sort of gone for some small borders, they're relatively happy with them, fair enough, I'll leave them to it. India are still around, I mean, I don't know if they're going to win, they kept their capital, which is obviously the most important, but they still have plenty of stuff, so, but they're kind of in between a rock and a hard place, because Mongolia is going to show up at some point, <laughs> and poor old Persia. Uh, not poor old Persia, poor old India is sort of trapped between them and Persia. Like, there's no way to go south, which is where most of, their, most of their units are. So maybe they'll have a chance. I'm just hoping Indonesia can get out like some some, some warriors. Please, guys. You're making me <laughs> break my heart. I'm sorry. What did I do to you? But yeah, there's not too many sort of sieges going on right now. Oh, is that new Shoshone city? Nope, that one's always been there. They just They're so big, aren't they? Okay, they actually have another settler. They'd actually be really good to come place it down here. California area. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, Persia did just grab a city in Sri Lanka. So that is southern, southern India and the ocean around it. It'd be under their control. And at least they have a lot of coastal cities. That will help fending off Mongolia when they try to come through the mountains. And probably round this way in the future. Oh, Siam with a settler. Mongolia did just grab this as well. So it's not all... Not really good news, but at least it's a start, Siam. And also, Mongolia just looking very peaceful right now. They're just happy. Units are very spread out. Maybe they're just scouting all of this free land, trying to assess what to do next. They, Yeah, they have not really grouped up. They, they, were, they were very close, weren't they? I think they looked like they were going to go after this Korean city, and then they changed their mind. I don't know if they realized that Korea obviously has some other city. Korea, I think it's just the AI's nightmare, because Seoul... Busan and Jeonju, they're the three cities that are just so spread out, like they're the three corners of the screen almost. That's just going to be very difficult for the AI. Gandhi, you are feeling it. Okay. Siam, I'm not your biggest fan. I don't know why. I just feel like in my Let's Plays, you've always been one to screw me over. Um, even though I, I doubt that's true. Maybe like you probably did it in like my first ever Let's Play, and that's just stuck in my brain since. Siam, you should get involved in this. Austria has declared war on Poland. They are at war with Rome as well, so now they are fighting each side. Don't know if that will work out for them. Montezuma, oh, the Mayans and the Aztecs pieced out. Nothing changed hands. Sweden v Korea, well, that doesn't matter, does it? And Ethiopia, Poland, again, not too influential, unless I'm missing something pretty crazy. Whoa, you go, Byzantium. I'm glad they're still alive at this point, to be honest. They've been improving. I think we used them in a recent battle... And, you know, they made it a fair way through before they collapsed. I think it was the last time we used the Europe map. Well, let's let's ignore this. It's going to be realistic, right? So there we go. 
doesn't matter if one sieve that's really far away from everyone else is really strong. Songhai and Britain joint first, no, joint second, Mongolia leading the way. Four techs ahead now, I think that extra settler was a little too OP. I didn't actually mean to give it to them, which is the worst part, but... Oh no, that was a whole new fresh set of wars, I think. Oh no, I didn't mean to click away. No, I, I don't think it was. I think Britain v Zulu was just a new one at the top. That doesn't matter too much. Egypt v Sweden is another one. Again, game is going to go through one of those phases. We have them every battle where the wars just mean nothing. I imagine Egypt v Sweden will be one of those, probably. Don't see why not. Oh, Sweden piecing out with Persia. Well, that's that was what mattered. Russia, okay, I'm hoping they're not going to spread thin. It looks like that was just a random war on Korea. But yeah, Russia v Poland could be interesting. The problem is Russia's going to lose a lot just because their units are spread out throughout Poland <laughs> right now, I think. Oh my goodness, there's so much going on. Ah, ah, um, Siam v Persia, as we wanted to see. This could be bad for Persia, but if India and Siam come back, then you know what, that'd be a pretty cool storyline. I don't care at this point. Storylines are awesome. If Siam and India fight off the Persian, it would be like a rising and falling kind of thing. That would actually be really cool. Is this list kept moving? Nope, I'm missing stuff. There's so much, there's more wars being declared. Siam v the Zulu, that doesn't matter too much. Korea v Persia doesn't matter. Austria v Persia, doesn't matter. Austria v the Zulu, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, this, this is making me feel a lot better about all these wars that broke out. Ethiopia v Korea, doesn't matter. Ethiopia, Persia, no. They're not going to come over here. Ethiopia, Zulu. Interesting, but I think it's not going to matter unless there's Ethiopians really forward settle. Shaka here. And Britain v Persia, again, doesn't matter. All too much, so there we go. Phew, not as bad as we thought. Thought it was going to be a disaster. India v Korea, that kind of does matter, but India's obviously pretty occupied fighting the Persians. The problem is, yeah, the AI is never going to pick one of these four cities to focus on. The best thing that could happen for India is Siam take the one here, Pasa Gadai, and then India could at least like focus on grabbing Mumbai back or something. But these these four cities are all so close, all their units will be being bombarded all the time. That's a pretty pretty rough spot. Songhai v Austria, and oh, they're actually going after Morocco too, so they're not giving up on this just yet. This could be quite an interesting one. Plenty going on. Byzantium, the Huns, and the Ottomans staying very peaceful. Respect it. Oh, look at the Carthaginian navy. So many of their unique boats here descending on Byzantium. Pretty cool. Oh, and the Aztecs just lost another city. Didn't even know it was weak. And there we go, the Cree grabbing another city, sort of into Mexico now, beyond Texas. And the Iroquois, probably going to kill the Sioux this turn, so let's quickly watch this. Oh, the Aztecs did recapture it. The Shoshone settler is heading very far from home. But there we go. Oh, and there we go, the Iroquois. Do we grab it? So there we go, the Iroquois sort of forming this little cool corner empire, and I think the Sioux didn't quite make it, so it looks like they have died. Sorry, Sioux. <laughs> bit too ambitious with wherever you were planning on settling. Just took you a little bit too long. I don't know where this Siamese settler is going. There's so many like decent spots. Like even here is acceptable. Like somewhere I don't know exactly where they can because of... these maps are weird. Because I think you can th theoretically settle very close on this map, but the AI still chooses not to most of the time. Poland has pieced out with Sweden. At least they didn't give anything away. There is so much going on. The Cree once again recaptured this. Ethiopia has got Borubadur. There it is. The moment we've all been waiting for me to say it again. Britain has completed Angkor Wat, and I think that was it, but I did see something else happen. I need to try find it. What was it? Oh, Rabat. Oh, okay, they took it back. But Songhai, very briefly, took that city off Morocco. Khan Indonesia. Oh, where are your settlers, man? Okay, at least Siam's trading with you now. That's a bit more money. I guess cargo ships. Japan isn't. They're trading with the Siamese, who are trying here in their war effort. It's not really gone to plan so far. And there we go, Rabat once again falls into the Songhai's hands. We could have a Carthage v Rome later on, that could be pretty cool. Carthage, Rome and Byzantium all still alive. Makes a very interesting Mediterranean, not a scenario I've really seen before. Russia might take Reclaw, which is going to make our hopes for the Huns to rise up and fight the Mongolians pretty pretty scary, difficult still. It looks like one of them's going to have to reign victorious in that one, and it needs to be soon really, but oh well. We're not going to moan. It will, it will, whatever happens, happens. That's the point. It's an AI only battle. It's all about letting them letting them be. Or we'd be playing. Do you have another new... No, that is the new city. Okay. 
don't know why this city has grown so little. Like, I mean, it'd just take a wheat farm. <laughs> it would grow a lot more. And there we go. Russia captures Raclaw. Songhai once again take Rabat. The Aztec capital is safe for now. The sh Wait, is that a different? There are two Shoshone settlers out there. There we go. How is South America looking? It looks like the Incans are gearing up to attack the Brazilians again. And the Corral are staying pretty peaceful along the coast. They do have another settler up. Hopefully it comes if it comes down here, lots of wheat farms, that could be a cool city. Morocco are fighting for dear life. Ethiopia did put their settler down. I think Zulu have yet settled in Madagascar. So a couple new cities for some of the sub-Saharan African nations. Not for the Congo though, which is pretty scary. Congo, can you uh, speed up and do that please? They have their pombos now, so that might protect them from the impies. I don't know exactly which one's stronger, but I assume impies are stronger. But I don't know what the pombos do. I played as the Congo a very long time ago. That's the only time I've tried. Is it? What is this? This is immortal. So emperor difficulty was TSL as the Congo. I don't know if we'll go and try emperor again. I haven't even been able to win on prince reason. Oh no, I've been trying to win on king. Um, I've got a TSL game lined up as a sieve that I think if I don't win on on king, I should probably retire from sieve. In fact. If you guys are watching to this point, a little teaser. It's just planned, it's not like set up. I think it is. I think I've got a Civ 6 TSL and a Civ 5. The Zulu is one of them, probably in Civ 5, I think. And then Civ 6 would be Britain or the UK. Or it might be the other way around. I can't remember. It's broke down. It's on my phone here. I'm pretty sure it is this. I'm pretty sure I want to do Civ, Civ 5 TSL as the Congo. And I want to do Civ 6 TSL as England or the UK. I think it's England in Civ 6. Yeah, Civ 5 TSL Zulu. Civ 6 as the... So if I can't win on King difficulty as Shaka, just aggressively settling, killing the Congo off nice and early. No offence, Congo. Maybe I should just leave them out of the game if I'm going to kill them anyway. Just give myself a bit more of a head start. But yeah, super aggressive Zulu attempt. Probably, obviously, domination's pretty difficult on a map this big. I tried it as a Syria. It just doesn't work, I'm afraid. <laughs> There's no way you can have enough happiness. But you can try and just be like a pretty strong nation obviously i don't want to be sometimes it's a bit boring if you get too strong i like to be more medium so everyone to be medium sized is more fun then there's more strategy to it i guess as opposed to everyone just being like some sims being ridiculous and just waltzing over everyone i get a bit bored then when it's just me every turn oh this sieve is who we're going to bomb with our planes today and waltz on in i prefer it to be sort of all medium sized so i want to do something in europe too where there's just a lot of sieves, very congested. I might mount in off, you know the Europe map? I might mount in off Africa, because those sieves are always too strong. Maybe mount in off a little bit more behind Russia. Just fill it with mountains so that no one can use it. And then have a more of a tense, intimate Europe battle. That could be pretty cool. The Iroquois, and I would like to play as Rome, I should point out, if that was to be the scenario, or an Italian sieve, because I've tried so many things in so many games involving Italy. It's just not worked for us. <laughs> I think I've tried two seasons of Venice in EU4. Nope, neither worked. Maybe we should try a third season. But I have got EU4 lined up too, so that would take a while too. There we go, the Iroquois just struggling to take over the... Oh no, oh no, they only just started, sorry. But this could be very difficult. Byzantium versus the Zulu. Not too important a war. But yeah, I've got plenty of stuff lined up, so that's pretty good. Including, I think, a Civ 5 AI only. Um... Normally, I'm going to try to keep an AI only of some kind going at all times from now on. Whether I'm, I think once, because I've got a holiday coming up, so I don't want to overwork myself because I know I've got to make either 10 days or maybe I'll do half days of content for when I'm away and get it all ready to go out when I'm gone um, for 10 days. But yeah, I don't want to overwork myself before then. But once I get back, and especially once I get back to university, Hopefully I'll go back up to 45 minutes a day, and then I might switch it from two series at once to three, assuming they don't slow down too much, and then maybe I could do like an hour at the weekends to really keep things going at a good pace, and I'll try and keep three series running, hopefully, because, yeah, I'm definitely preferring just doing this half an hour a day or whatever, just one episode, I'm much preferring this to all the other stuff I've tried, so we're going to stick with it. A couple new cities from Mongolia. Very nice. Or well, just one, I should say. Oh no, two. They've got Taiwan. No, it's. I think it's Ty Taiwan. Ty. Oh my. Okay, they have three. <laughs> so I was just saying, Siam should settle this tile. They missed out. If they settle that up here, then they. Then you know that proves it that I'm not wrong here. Mongolia isn't the problem. <laughs> 
God, Korea. I assume they're not attacking Mongolia. This could be like an unholy alliance. Japan's just like, what's this? And then Korea and Mongolia, just a surprise attack. That could be quite funny. Oh, the Shoshone have gifted us the Panama Canal. That is awesome. Yes, Shoshone. You're already now, in my eyes, the number one sieve in North America. That was all you had to do. And also the Cree, going for Baja, California there. Plenty of set cities still being settled. The Iroquois and Shoshone just grabbed new cities up here. Is this is that Nova Scotia? I, don't, I think it's meant to represent it, that area of Canada. I don't know. It's pretty small on this map. I don't really know. And this is just, I don't know, the tundra. <laughs> I don't really know my geography of Canada. Arabia versus the Ottomans. This would be very cool if Arabia could take this. I mean, they definitely should, right? They look like they have more units, but the Ottomans have a fair few. But yeah, I'm sure... So we're kind of interesting one. Ethiopia has just entered the Renaissance era. We're in turn 160. Um, we'll probably get we'll get for a few more, obviously, this episode before it ends. There'll probably be one more episode, then it'll be turn 200, and that's when we'll look at the info addicts again. That could be quite an interesting time. It looks like the Zulu are about to grab the city of Memphis, so they're continuing to gather some strength down here now. Looking pretty scary. Morocco has pieced out with the Zulu. Not that I was even aware they were at war. Well, not fully, obviously. I'm sure I read it out, but I didn't. was not paying that much attention. Wow, we've not been looking at Russia. Poland is now down to one city as Russia take over sort of Polish, Baltic states and parts of Finland, the Novgorod area. Russia definitely have enough that they could go after Warsaw. Poland only has two units left, and Austria is, isn't putting in much effort, but they are here. To be fair, Austria is pretty weak right now. They're sort of trying to fend off the few units that Rome are throwing at them too. All the Europeans have just exhausted their resources. The only really strong one right now seems to be Byzantium on land here in Greece and Turkey. And there we go, the Zulu do capture the city of Memphis. The Iroquois v the Aztecs and the Maya. I think the Aztecs were just about scraped through this war, just because they're in a difficult spot to get to. The Cree actually just pieced out with them, so that's, that's an even better advantage. But the Iroquois are probably going to take this Comanche city which is at least going to keep keep the pressure on the Cree, keep expanding too. And hopefully soon these North Americans might start to put some pressure on the South Americans, because Brazil... Oh, okay, I missed this. The Inca... Okay, the Inca... Inca probably won't have a big role in this. I mean, they'll probably take wherever this settler goes. But, um, yeah, Brazil definitely about to take this city off the corral, and that's a good start. And that will obviously be a bit more threatening then towards the Incans. And Russia has slapped a settler down towards Korea too. Maybe this is it. Maybe it's going to start to fill up. It doesn't even, like, this area to stop Mongolia, it doesn't even need to fill up so much that it's so much, that it's, like, a one big strong sieve. Even if it's just loads of random settling of random cities, just to make it a pain. Just don't make it easy for Mongolia. Like, that's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for, like, Russia to take all of it. If Russia, Korea, India, the Huns... I don't know, maybe the Ottomans sneak a few settlers through, just randomly slap three or four down each and just make it difficult. But Gandhi's time seems to have come, I'm afraid. This is like the Grim Reaper knocking on his door. This does not look good for this poor city. It looks like the workers should probably abandon ship. Mongolia's peaced out with Austria. Surprised they didn't get anything in the peace deal. I have just seen the best settling of all time, so I'll show you that in a second. Right after I show you the second best, which I've also just noticed. Egypt have grabbed the Oracle, that's pretty cool. Second best settling of ever. Indonesia are finally going. Oh no, don't break game. Don't break. No, Congo. Please, Congo. Has it been you this whole time? Uh oh. God damn it. <laughs> this is not good. Oh no, I thought last episode was some sort of fluke. No, no, no. <laughs> Please. Fingers crossed. Everything crossed. What have you done, Congo? Well, anyway, in, in case we never see it again, Indonesia just settled another island, and more importantly, you might be able to see it in the tiny corner of the map. Byzantium has settled Iceland. This is not looking good, though. I mean, it's not crashed, it's just... We're not really doing anything. Oh, there it is. Phew! Mongolia has discovered every civilization in the world. My heart is beating again. I thought that was it. I thought we were done for. There we go. Mongolia now controls the world's congress. Well, not really. It has two votes, but... 
Ah, oh, phew. Indonesia did grab this city here, so they're going to start to start expanding pretty quickly. That would be cool. And Byzantium did grab Iceland. That is awesome. Nice Byzantium. Very much appreciate that. This is such a cool little naval war going on. Byzantium are now fighting back with their unique boats. It's the Dromons v. the Quinquiremes. I love this. Are the Quinquiremes... Oh, no, they're not the unique... They're not everyone's boats in... Civ 6, that's a quadrarium. Pretty close, but different. Great Mosque of Gen for the Iroquois. Very nice. Little wonder. At least they're not all going Mongolia's way. I think India and Mongolia and Korea are about to attack India. That sucks for him. And they've just wasted all their units on Persia, who are probably going to end up taking Delhi now as well. And there we go, Brazil taking the Corral City down here. So that's a bit more resources for them. Chiro de Potosi. De Potosi still available. I don't think El Dorado is on this map. There's another Corral settler up here, but the Inca are probably going to take it. Unless they can slap it down before then. Maybe then. Maybe there's hope for them. We, we can dream. The Corral... That could be like a movie. Just the Corral Settlers dodge. I can imagine that being a movie. What is it? It's the year 1050 AD. In like 2000 AD in this game. The people of Mongolia. The Galactic... The Galactic's a bit much. The United World Council of Mongolia. Something like that. And they're all just watching a movie about the great Corral Settlers. Actually, I imagine they'd probably watch Mongolian stuff. I feel like... I feel like Genghis is going to be a bit of an authoritarian. For some reason. You know, nothing... Nothing personal, just imagine that's how he would be. I can't imagine Mongolia being the land of the free in this world. But maybe it is. Maybe that's why they're doing so well. Uh, there was a big war. The Shoshone versus the Cree. That is pretty brave. I mean, just launching all out assault on their capital while they're spread thin. Pretty good idea, to be fair. The Iroquois may actually join in if they take this soon enough. The problem is all their bowmen are in the way of the one unit that is currently in the sea. Trying to save them. The Ottomans pieced out the Arabia. They just won't die. They're holding on to this bit of land. There's so many sieves that want it. Look, they bought us six different sieves. The Huns, Byzantium, Carthage, Arabia, per sorry, five. Arabia, Persia, they're all trying. And Austria did manage to take Warsaw. Sort of. <laughs> Russia did all the hard work, and Austria just had one pikeman that was close enough. But there you go. If they can hold on to Warsaw, then that's Austria looking a little stronger too. Maybe Western Europe's last hope. Although Rome's looking pretty cool too. And Britain. That's all that remains. Spain, France and Poland have now fallen. So that's half of them gone. The other half still remain. Well Sweden's probably going to go at some point. It's just they're a bit safe because there's no one like strong and consolidated nearby. They can just sort of sit there and fight off attacks from smaller cities. So that's pretty good. Um, Egypt versus Carthage. Interesting. I think Carthage will get by. Egypt aren't that strong. I'm surprised Ethiopia haven't regrouped and taken them out. Depends. Depends what this Byzantine army does, right? If this this is looking so interesting, the Carthaginian boats have fought their way through, but Byzantium managed to get their army at least across from Turkey to North Africa, and this is where they can really damage Carthage, take Baghdad and Nisaya back. Did Byzantium, I think Byzantium briefly had this, or maybe Egypt did, someone took it off Arabia very briefly, maybe, maybe it fell back again, and there we go, Russia grabbing a second city out this way, maybe there's hope, I'm just very surprised, the Huns just seem to be like waiting for something, they're just surrounding Istanbul, I don't really know what they're, what they're trying to do, or oh, Persia, this could be it, this could be the sieve we need, Persia starts settling in this area, that could do it too, they seem to have run out a little bit in the offence against Delhi. They have musketmen, which puts them ahead in theory. Okay, Mongolia has one too, so they both have okay, a couple. Okay, so Persia aren't too far behind. Well, what it probably means is Mongolia doesn't have the money to buy all the things they want. Siam, you are... Uh, you. What are you doing? Why would you do that? Oh, oh no. Oh no. In an episode full of settling, Mongolia has reached northeastern Australia. This could be big. If Mongolia gets all of Australia, the Pacific might may burn, I'm afraid. But there we go. The race may be lost. Hopefully Mongolia don't reinforce it too much. Hopefully our boys in Indonesia can uh, get down there. Do a good job. 
Zulu is still trying. I don't actually know what was proposed in the World's Congress. Don't know. Well, don't know. That's so brutal. That's just aimed at Indonesia, Mongolia. That is harsh. See who's winning for score. 648. Is anyone even... I don't even see a 500. The Korea are the nearest, I think. Oh, no, the Huns, 419. Korea were 398. Iroquois, 447. So it might be between those two. That is going to be it for this episode, though, guys. So if you have enjoyed, it would be awesome if you could leave a like on the video. Be sure to drop a comment down below as well. That would be awesome. Be sure to subscribe as well if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow.